Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough from Learn Python the Hard Way by Zed Shaw. Uh, to do it, first go to learnpythonthehardway.org and either click on read the free HTML online or click right here. They'll both take you to the table of contents, which I have open right here. In this one, we're going to be doing exercise three, which is numbers and math. And if you were to click on that link, it would take you to this page right here. Now, this one. It introduces some concepts that are a little funky that you uh, would not have dealt with very much if you haven't been doing computer programming. Let me um, just kind of show you, here's, here's his code. And I've got it written out line by line with just a few extra comments in it. So I'm actually gonna open up Text Wrangler right here. I've got it open, let me make that a little bigger and start showing you one line at a time what's going on here. Um, by the way, I already typed it all. I deleted it. So now I'm just doing, you know, undo to get it there instantly. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to print a line that says, I will now count my chicken. So that's what it's going to say in the uh, terminal when we run this. That's going to be the first line. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to print the word hens and then a space. And then it's going to do a little bit of math. Now, it's important here to remember the order of operations. You guys probably remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And what this means is parentheses you do first, then exponents, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. And so here we have 25 plus 30 divided by six. Well, there's no parentheses and there's no exponents. So the first thing you need to do is either multiplication, there's none of that, but division. So I've got a little comment here that says, first you do 30 divided by six, and that's equal to five. Second, you do addition, 25 plus five. Now I put quotes around the five just so you know that that's from the previous thing that we did. You, If you programmed it that way, it'd screw it up. But 25 plus five is equal to 30. And so the quotes are just for emphasis. So that's gonna get you, it'll put hens and then space and it'll put 30 because it's uh, 30 divided by six is five, 25 plus five is 30. The next one, roosters, um, has multiplication and subtraction and there's this one right here, the percent sign has a very particular meaning in programming. It's called the modulo or the modulus. And what it means is give me the remainder from the division of these two numbers. So let's take a quick look here. Now, the first thing we're gonna do when you have, um, and modulus is treated like division uh, in the order of operations. So we don't have any parentheses, we don't have any exponents, we do have multiplication. So for multiplication and division, you just go left to right. So the first thing we do is 25 times three. So that's gonna be 75. The second thing we do is the modulo, that's a division. And it's 75 divided by four, or 75 modulo four. By the way, I'm used to calling it modulo, Zed calls it modulus, either one, same diff. So 75 modulo four is equal to three. And the reason for that is because 75 divided by four is equal to 18 with a remainder of three. And it's the remainder part that we're interested in here. Now, please note, you probably haven't done remainder math since elementary school, but it's very important in, in uh, computer programming because it allows you to cycle through numbers in, in ways that could be very helpful. So the modulo comes up a fair amount. So we have 75 modulo four equals three because 75 divided by four is equal to 18 with a remainder of three and the modulo is asking for the remainder. So then we have 100 minus three and three is equal, uh, 100 minus three is equal to 97. So that's how many roosters we have. That's the number that's gonna print. Next, we're gonna do, I will count the eggs. Now I will count the eggs. And here we get a long series of math with a bunch of stuff in it. And let me show you the order here. Um, the first thing going from left to right, you see, is this one right here, four modulo two. Again, you, in the order of operations, it falls in the same place as division. Four modulo two is equal to zero because four divided by two is equal to two with a remainder of zero. There's no remainder, so four modulo two is zero. The next one is this one, 1.0 divided by four. Now the 1.0, the reason there's a point in there is because that makes it what's called floating point uh, number. And that means to use decimals. 
I'll show you an example a little later in this same program that I added that says if you don't have that, it's going to give you zero. But if you do have the point zero, it's going to know to give you a fractional or decimal value. and It'll be 0 0.25. And so you need that 0, 0, 0.0 to indicate that this is a floating point number and to give a floating point result. Floating point means decimal places. And it's, and it's, it's uh, contrasted to integers, which are whole numbers. All right, so 1.0 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.25, and you got to have the point 0 to make it a floating point. And then you just go left to right. So 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6, minus 5 is 1, plus 0 is still 1, minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75, plus 6 is 6.75. And again, I put the quotes just to emphasize that those come from uh, an earlier value. So please don't type those. It'll screw up the program. I'm just using those in the quotes to em for emphasis. All right, Zen Z goes through a bunch of what are called Boolean operations or truth tests. And the idea here is you're doing a comparison and the result is going to be a true or false. So the first thing it's going to ask is, is it true that three plus two is less than five minus seven? Well, three plus two is five, five minus seven is negative two. So is it true that five is less than negative two? No, it's not, it's gonna be false. And so you get to see that here. So he's actually gonna have us print out the result here. And again, it's not gonna give you math. It's going to give you true or false. And that, that's an interesting one. That's gonna be the result, not the numbers, the true or false. If you wanna see the numbers, you have to do it manually. And Z shows, print what is three plus two, and then it'll have a space and the result, and it'll say five. And then what is five minus seven, a space, and it'll give you the result, and it's gonna be in minus two. And then he has it print, oh, that's why it's false. Okay, um, and then he says, how about some more? Is it greater, is five greater than minus two? Yes, it is. Is it greater or equal? Five is greater than or equal to? Remember, that's how you do the greater than or equal to sign. Minus two, yes it is. Is it less than or equal to? False, it's not. You'll see that all in a minute. Um, plus I added a little bit of extra code here to, to, to really emphasize the difference between integers and floating points. In all of these, I've done a variation of five divided by four. So how many times does four go into five? Now you know that the answer is one and a quarter, 1.25. But if I write them both as integers, just a five divided by four with no points in it, it will simply truncate and throw off any fractional value. On the other hand, if I put a point zero on either the first number or the second number or both, Python will treat it as floating point numbers and will give the answer with the fractional value. So anyhow, that's all there. Let me now run the program. I'm going to come up here. I'm currently back in my root directory, and so I need to change the directory that has my scripts. Because remember, over here I'm writing the script, but I'm not running it. I run it in the terminal. So uh, i got to do two things. First, I want to get back to the folder where it is. This is the script. I'm going to come right here and do cd for change directory, and I put a space, and then I just drag this up and it throws in the whole thing there. And now when I hit that, I'm working in the active folder now. I wanna run this one, number three. So what I'm gonna do is, because I'm in the terminal, whoops, I'm going to type in the word Python, which means run this as a Python script. It has to be all lowercase, I put a space, and then ex03.py. And I can get away with this because I'm currently in the folder that has that. I hit return, and then you'll get all sorts of stuff. I will count my chickens. You see that we got 30, and that's from doing this math right here, 25 plus 3, 30 divided by 6. We get the 97 for the roosters, and that included a modulo. Now I'll count my eggs, 6.75. To get the 0.75, we had to use the 0.10 to indicate that it was a floating point number. Is it true that this is equal to greater than that? Now look, this is the command that was written. Print three plus two less than 5.7. And this is the way that it comes out. It just says false. Remember, it's, it's a truth test or a Boolean thing. And then we get these other answers. That's why it's false. How about some more? Is it greater? True. Is it greater than or equal to true? Is it less than or equal? Fine. And then there's these few lines I added at the bottom. Five divided by four, if you write them as whole numbers, is equal to one. The, the 0.25 just gets truncated, gets chopped off and thrown away because it's treating them as integers and it throws away anything that's after. But if you put a point zero on the first or the second number or both, it will give you an accurate answer of 1.25. I will mention, however, there are times 
when the truncation can actually be used to your advantage if all you want is, um, it, you can think of it sometimes as the opposite of the modulo. The modulo gives you the remainder, this part gives you the whole numbers. And I, I have used both in, in this way. If I only want the whole number part, then taking numbers that I know would give floating point math and instead writing them down as integers, it truncates them, it can be helpful. Anyhow, that's a fair amount on how to do math and with order of operations and with the modulo and with floating point versus integers. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in the next video.